Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Zuzucorn's Tips and Guides for the Casual Terrarian. I'm Zuzucorn, and I aim to entertain, encourage, and give casuals a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the casual family. Last time, we explored the dungeon for the Master Ninja Gear, farmed the Frost Moon for the Chain Gun, and also took down Duke Fishron for his amazing weapons. Today, let's take down Golem and perhaps the Lunatic Cultist as well. Our beginner guide series will soon come to an end, but let's get right into it today. So to start off, let's take down Golem first. Golem doesn't have many game-changing drops, but defeating him is required for the Lunatic Cultist to spawn, and only then can we work towards summoning the Moon Lord. Golem resides in the Jungle Temple, so let's begin by making our way to the jungle. You know, since we have a Plantera Bulb near the arena we built the last time, let me just show you how the Tsunami will fare against her. This fight is much faster now with the Tsunami, I'm using wooden arrows too. Just look at that damage, she's already at half health. Thanks to the Tsunami, we can afford to be a bit reckless. See, a really really smooth fight. That took about 20 seconds in total. Swell. Alright, here we are in the jungle temple, where Golem resides. If you have trouble finding the one in your world, use a Spelunker potion and look for these temple chests and treasures. To enter, we needed the key from Plantera, which we already used to unlock the door some time ago. If you realised, we also cannot mine these blocks yet, so the only way has to be via the jungle key from Plantera. The jungle temple is filled with many deadly and high damaging traps. However, we have a secret weapon, the wire cutter. If you notice, holding the wire cutter actually reveals all the circuits in the temple. So all you need to do is turn smart cast on by pressing the left control key and destroy the circuit, thus preventing any of the traps from working. Strictly speaking, you only need to make a single break, but doing this is fine too. The traps are deadly and really do high damage, so try not to skip out on this step here. So slowly navigate through the temple, room by room, deactivating any traps along the way. Loot the lizard chests as well, especially for the lizard power cells, which are what we need to summon golem. Just because the traps are deactivated doesn't mean that it's safe by the way. There are also wooden spikes, and these spikes do significant amounts of damage as well, so watch out for those. Okay, we have made our way to Golem's chamber, as you can see by this yellow altar. This is where you summon Golem, using a lizard power cell. Golem's room also has a lot of traps, so let's deal with those first. Okay, with the wired traps deactivated, let's get rid of the spikes as well. We don't want to take unnecessary damage during the fight. Next, I recommend blocking off the entrance as well, so the temple monsters won't come in and interfere with our fight. Next, what we need to do is build platforms. Just about two rows will do, each about a third of the way up. This should be fine. Once you're ready, buff up if you have to, and summon Golem. Oh wow, somehow ours got stuck up there. That's quite interesting. So Golem starts off with three parts, his left arm, right arm, and body. The arms will fire out at you, but will stop once damaged. You can get rid of the two arms first if you want, but it's not very necessary. He basically only shoots these fireballs which ricochet off the walls, and lasers from his eyes. The main threat in this fight is being trapped by Golem. To avoid this, fly and dash over him using the Master Ninja Gear. You can't really go below him, because when you move downwards, Golem will also move downwards. Well, with the body gone, Golem is defeated. That was pretty easy. There are few game-changing drops from Golem, so let's just farm him with whatever remaining power cells we have. What matters is that we defeat him at least once anyways. Some notable drops here though. He drops beetle shells, which combine with the turtle armor to make beetle armor, a strong melee armor. There is also the eye of golem, which can be combined with avenger emblems to make the destroyer emblem. There's also the sunstone, which is a component to the celestial shell, a strong accessory. We were also able to get the Pixar, the next pickaxe upgrade. This allows us to mine every block in vanilla terraria, including the jungle temple blocks. However, you don't really need to mine these in a casual playthrough. For melee players out there, the possessed hatchet is actually a pretty good fast weapon that homes in on the enemy. 
so you can consider getting this one as well. Now that Golem is defeated, we can now get Martian Invasions. We want to farm this invasion for mainly the Cosmic Car Key, a UFO mount that allows unlimited flight. There are a few strong weapons there too, but for ranged characters, there's nothing much that's notable. Martian Invasions are spawned using a Martian Probe, which is a rare enemy who has a higher chance of spawning in the outer thirds of the world. What better place than where we fought Duke Fishron? Oh, we managed to get one already. So this is a Martian Probe, and if you kill it like this, nothing happens. So how it works is like this. You need to let the Martian Probe detect you, then allow it to escape. If you kill it before the Martian Probe escapes, the invasion will be stopped. Martian probes not only have a higher chance at spawning in the outer thirds of the world, it also has a higher chance to spawn in the space layer, which is high in the sky. So by using the Duke Fishron Arena, we can simply work even further up. With that done, you can add a water candle too, to increase spawn rates even further. Ah nice, we got one already. So just go near it and let it detect you, then allow it to escape. With this, you get a message that Martians are invading. Great! The Martian invasion is difficult. The enemies are tough and do high damage. However, luckily, we can use the AFK farm we built a few episodes ago. Oh wow, a blood moon. Oh, and it's raining too. Anyway, this keeps us safe from almost everything in the invasion. However, you still have to use the Daedalus Stormbow to attack the enemies, as lava does not do significant damage to them. The kamikaze monsters can still hurt you too, but it's nothing much. Take note that the Martian captain has a bubble shield as well, that prevents them from getting hurt by lava, so you definitely still have to attack it with the Stormbow. Eventually, a Martian saucer will spawn. Luckily, all its attacks are blocked by walls. Use the Daedalus Stormbow to attack it. It starts off with 4 cannons, so in the first phase, you have to get rid of all of the cannons. With the cannons defeated, you can attack its core, and it will start going left and right, shooting the laser like this. Just lead your shots a little and aim slightly in front of where it's moving. Eventually, it will die, dropping its precious loot. For the first one, we got a Xeno Staff, a pretty strong summon weapon. Alright, after a whole night, we didn't manage to get the UFO mount yet, I'll go through some of the drops. First, we have the Xeno Staff, a strong summon weapon. This minion will never miss an attack, so that's very useful actually. Then we have the laser drill, a drill that can mine temple blocks. Drills are basically ranged pickaxes, but I personally still prefer pickaxes. We got the laser machine gun, a strong magic weapon that takes time to ramp up. It's really strong, but the mana usage is extremely high. Next we have the charge blaster cannon, I think it's bad, but I don't know, maybe it's good in some cases. We have the Electrosphere Launcher, a rocket launcher that shoots this field that damages enemies. The thing is, you can't stack these, and if you put one too near another, it will just replace it. It's a bit wonky in my opinion. Lastly, we managed to get an Influx Waver, one of the best swords in the game. Each blue projectile hit will spawn three swords that additionally damage the enemy. This is a really good melee weapon. Well, let's get another invasion. Wow, that was quick. Nice, we got the UFO mount on the first saucer. Let me finish up the invasion. Alright, for the second one, we managed to get the ranged weapon, the Xeno Popper. But well, it's kinda clunky, even with chlorified bullets, so I can't really recommend it. Right, so equip the Cosmic Car Key in your mount slot, which is over here, and press R to use it. This mount allows you to fly forever, until you want to get off. Press R again to get off. Against the Lunatic Cultists, I recommend using Cursed Arrows, not for the debuff, but for the damage. They are somewhat easy to farm and craft as well, using only arrows and cursed flames from corruption monsters. So let's craft some and let's go to the dungeon. Right, see these four guys. If you kill them, the lunatic cultist fight begins. So buff up and let's go. See, this is the lunatic cultist. I recommend the UFO mount and the tsunami. But you can use the chain gun and chlorified bullets as well. 
This fight is simple, just keep circling around the cultists like so. This allows you to dodge most of his attacks. So just keep it up and whack him. Alright, here's the challenge. When this happens, look for the darker coloured, different lunatic cultist and attack it. If you attack the wrong one or don't attack, the clones will transform and cause a lot of problems. So just be careful for this part. Otherwise, the fight is simple, just keep circling around. Okay, he's actually almost dead. I actually want to bring him down a little, just to show you the drops. Okay, there we go. Oh, we got a pillar right here, the stardust one. I'm actually gonna go back first, because I don't want to deal with that right now. Well, congratulations, you have defeated the lunatic cultist and begun the lunar event. Let me just introduce it to you. I think we'll settle it the next time. So firstly, after defeating the lunatic cultist, the four space pillars will spawn randomly on the map. We got the stardust pillar, which is summoner based, the vortex pillar, which is range based, We'll actually go for that one first. We have the Nebula Pillar for Mages and the Solar Pillar for Melee users. Be careful though, don't take down all four pillars or else the Moon Lord will spawn. The Moon Lord requires a lot of preparation which I'll go through in the next episode, so make sure to always leave at least one remaining pillar until you're ready. Next time we will take down the pillars and defeat the Moon Lord, bringing our Casual Terrarian series to an end. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too, so you won't miss the last episode of the Casual Terrarian. This has been Zuzucorn Games, by casuals for casuals. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!